Hello everyone, in this short video, I will be showing you how to deploy a virtual server in our fast SSD-based cloud platform. If you are in our website, just click up here to log in. Now, that will take you to our custom-built management portal. So, go ahead, enter the username you received when you signed up. And uh, enter the password you specified during this sign-up process. And now, here we are logged in. Welcome, this is the interface you will see once you are logged in. Right now, of course, there are no servers listed. Let's go ahead and deploy the first server. Click Deploy Service up here. That will open up our deployment screen. The first thing I want to say is that the pricing that you see here is not accurate. It's just for demonstration purposes only for this video. The first step is to take is to choose a size for your virtual server. What do I mean by size? In our platform, unlike many others, you can actually customize the amount of memory, SSD disk space, and CPU cores for your virtual servers. In this case, we have selected the XL size as it is the most popular package. You can also choose other smaller or larger packages. Of course, the larger, the better your server's performance will be. For example, you might not need 160 gigabytes of SSD disk space, so you can bring that down or up. Let's say we want only 50, and uh, let's say we only want two CPU cores. Now the next step is to choose a location. This is an important step. And the reason for that is that geographical distance does affect network performance. The farther away a server is, the slower it will feel accessing a website or an application hosted on that server. Let me give you a hint. If your intended audience is mostly in Europe, then I suggest that you choose our Amsterdam, Netherlands location. If most of your audience is from the east coast of the US, then go for our Virginia location. However, if they are from all over the place, we recommend our Las Vegas, Nevada location as it is our largest and most capable data center. So in this video, we will choose Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll go for the next step, and that is to choose the operating system. In this case, I'm building a Linux-based virtual server, and I've selected CentOS 7. You can also choose any other Linux operating system you desire, or you can also choose a Windows operating system. Now let's go back to CentOS 7 again. In the next step, we will choose a password for this virtual server. In the case of Linux, this password will become the server's root password, and in the case of Windows, this will be the administrator password. Let's go ahead and specify that. Let's confirm the password again. And then we have the label. You will see later on what this label is for. It is mostly for you to identify the server in our management portal. Let's call this My CentOS 7 Server. You have a couple of additional options. You can add more than one IP numbers, for example. By default, you can request up to two IP numbers per virtual server. If you need more, you can contact our staff to request more. For network options, our virtual servers include a one gigabyte port for incoming traffic. You can also choose a dedicated outgoing port as per your requirement. Most clients choose the one gigabit option. And then the last option, and in my opinion, the most important one, backups. Also called snapshots. Our system can do a snapshot of your virtual server every day. And at last, we go ahead and we deploy the server. If you specified a credit card during signup, Colossus Cloud will automatically charge your credit card at this point of time. If you made a PayPal deposit, it will withdraw the cost of this virtual server from your deposit. And uh, we'll go ahead and deploy the service. You will see here now a couple of messages saying how much your payment was, that your virtual service deployment is in progress, and it also tells you to see the deployment status by just scrolling down. In this case, I'm going to click here to close the deployment screen.
At this point in time, you can see the server I ordered with the label I specified along with its deployment status. So after a few minutes, the server we requested is now ready for us to use. Its status shows it is running and we can see it is hosted in our Las Vegas, Nevada zone. In the meantime, I've also deployed a few more servers so that you can see the flexibility of the Colossus Cloud platform. We have four servers here. For example, we have one server in Europe running in our Amsterdam data center. We have one East Coast server here running in Oshper in Virginia. Have a Windows server running in Las Vegas. Now, I will give you a quick walkthrough of some of the functions of Colossus Cloud. We have these four buttons per server. This one will gracefully shut down the virtual server. This one will reboot the virtual server, and this one will start the virtual server if it is in the off state. This one here opens the console, which will give you access to the screen and virtual keyboard of the server. For example, if, if we click on this one here, we can see the Windows console. We can do Control Alt Delete. It's almost as if you were standing in front of the server. We can do the same for Linux servers. Now, this is not the normal way you actually access your server. The console is mostly for emergencies. If for some reason you lose remote connection to a server, or you accidentally disable the network, or you can't log back in through SSH or remote desktop, then you can use the console to log into the server and fix the problem. There are many more functions to reveal. If you click on a server, you will open up a new screen that contains more information. Let's, uh, for example, open this one. We can see here several graphics as this is a new server. There isn't sufficient data yet. You can check the server's load average, bandwidth, CPU usage, and memory usage. Click up here on resources. Here we can change how much memory, CPU, and disk space we have. We can actually change this at any time. Here, in the Actions tab, we can destroy the virtual server. We can save the virtual server as a template that we can reuse over and over again. This here is to actually create a one-time snapshot of the server. This will resend the password of the virtual server in case you lost it and you can also reinstall the server with a different operating system or the same operating system you had before. Under this tab, we can see a little bit of information about this virtual server. Operating system, when it is due, when it was created, ability to add more IP numbers. You can also see the IP numbers assigned to the server. On reverse DNS, you can configure the reverse DNS for all IP numbers in the server. Very essential if you're running an email server. And here we will see the list of all the daily and one-time snapshots available at this time. As this server is brand new, we don't yet have any snapshots stored. In the future, if you wish to deploy more virtual servers, you can always go back here to deploy service and deploy brand new servers. Up here, we can see the information bar. It gives you the sum of all the resources assigned to all your virtual servers. Here, it is showing that all the servers add up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, 14 CPU cores, and 530 gigabytes of disk space. You can see that there are some limitations here. Every account has these limitations mostly for us to minimize abuse and fraud. If you need higher limits, just ask our staff and they will gladly increase it for you. Now, how do you access your servers? If you are accessing a Linux server, you would use an SSH client. If it is Windows, you would use the remote desktop client that is already included in your Windows computer. You can also get one for your Mac, iOS, or Android device. Well, this now concludes a quick overview on how to deploy virtual servers on the Colossus Cloud platform. We hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact our team of professionals 24 hours a day. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you.